This is the world's most reflective type of mirror, called a dielectric mirror. It reflects over 99.5% of visible light. So to give you an idea how reflective this is, I was actually looking for the reflector that I had set down on my table here and I couldn't find it. And I was like, oh, what's this white paper here? And this is actually the reflector reflecting off of the white wall. <laughs> it's literally the same brightness as the white wall here. Like that is just crazy. Normally when you hold a mirror up, you can easily see it's a mirror because it's a slightly grayer. It's grayer because it's absorbing some light. But look at this, it like disappears into the wall. It's only when I turn it away and shine it at the darker floor that you can actually see it. But when it's reflecting off the wall, it just disappears. But not only that, it has no Brewster angle, which means that no matter what the angle of light is that hits it, it'll still be reflective which means you can do some pretty neat stuff with it. If I roll it in a tube and pinch off one end of it, then it suddenly looks like I'm holding a flashlight in my hand that turns on and off when I pinch it. Because all the light from the room that would have exited the other end of the tube now bounces around and then exits the front of the tube. So virtually no light gets wasted. Any light that goes into the tube comes right back out. 99.5% reflectance is amazing. For comparison, this mirror or any other regular residential mirror only reflects about 60% of the light that hits it. A good way to compare the reflectiveness of this is to put it on a regular mirror and then reflect the white wall behind me. So you can see how much lighter and brighter this reflectance is than the mirror behind it. Higher grade optical mirrors like this one can get as high as 90% or 95% reflectance, but still nothing compared to this dielectric mirror. I got this material from 3M when I visited their innovation center. It's called a 3M Enhanced Specular Reflector or ESR film. After 3M developed this mirrored film, they weren't fully aware of its optical properties. But one day an engineer was in a long meeting and was holding some of this film in his hand. He was just playing around rolling it up and noticed the same thing that we just saw here. When he rolled it up and pinched one end, it became very bright. Now this confused him because he knew that this was made of dielectric material, which meant that it should have what's called a Brewster angle. The Brewster angle is the angle at which the reflection off the surface becomes completely polarized. But if that were happening, the light should extinguish really quickly and not bounce around and come back out the tube. You can imagine how many times it's bouncing off the surface here before it leaves. After some research, they found that the equations that derived the Brewster angle were for isotropic materials only, meaning materials that look the same no matter what direction you looked at them. But this material was made of a polymer that looked like spaghetti stretched out on the microscopic scale. So it looked different depending on which angle or which direction you were looking at it. So what they did is they derived the equation for anisotropic materials and sure enough they discovered that it doesn't have a Brewster angle. Now the results of this are a big deal. This meant that it's an extremely efficient reflector, especially for polarized light that's usually found in cell phones. In fact, this material right here is probably one of the reasons that you're watching this video on a cell phone today. When cell phones were being developed, one of the biggest setbacks for cell phones is that they had horrible battery life. The display actually used most of the battery due to the need for multiple lights. But then this material was introduced as a way to light up the entire display with only one light. You can see how it efficiently spreads the light over the whole surface. So this material began to be used everywhere in cell phone displays and countless other electronic displays. It made cell phones last much longer and become much more practical for everyday use. And before we continue, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, BetterHelp. These last few years have been difficult for everyone and one of the most important things you can do in times like this is to focus on your mental health. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. And you can message your therapist anytime and schedule a live session when it's convenient for you. And if your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge as well. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility at a more affordable price. So get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com actionlab, or you can click the link in the description. 
And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to our experiment. With the surface as reflective as this ESR film, you may find it odd to hear that it's completely non-metallic. There isn't some fine layer of silver or aluminum that's making it reflective. In fact, it's made completely of transparent polymers. So we're gonna look at these edges here. You can see when I look at it under the microscope here, so on the edges where I ripped it, you can see that each individual layer is transparent. This is a good spot here. You can see the step down of each layer. And you can see that they're all transparent. But when you get them all on top of each other, it makes it so it's a reflective surface. So how does transparent plastic make something so reflective? Well, let's look at what happens when light hits something that's transparent. Right at the surface between the air and the material, some of the light gets reflected and some of the light gets transmitted, meaning it goes into the material. The light that goes into the material bends a little bit depending on the refractive index. Now if we put another transparent material right below this layer with a different refractive index, then the light will do the same thing. Some will get reflected and some will get transmitted. In this case, the two path lengths of the beam differ by exactly one wavelength, which means you get constructive interference. So you're gaining back the light that went into the material by continually reflecting it off the bottom layers. To do this, you have to layer it in very thin layers that alternate from high to low refractive index. If you do it just right, then you can get almost perfect reflectance. And what's neat is that the thickness of these layers can be tuned to whatever wavelength of light you want to be reflected or transmitted. So you can get some really cool colors with different layers of these polymers, as opposed to just complete reflectance. So the most reflective mirror in the world actually is made up of a bunch of parts that aren't reflective at all. This is definitely an example where the sum of all the individual parts have different properties than the entire thing as a whole. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And if you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to get to them. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.